Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this quick and easy daybreak cork wallet. There is a flap on the front with lots of card pockets underneath, eight in total. And I'm going to show you how to install a snap, uh, the kind that you need a rivet setter for, as well as a regular magnetic snap. So there's all your card pockets right here. On the back, there is another open pocket, great for your cash or receipts. You can even fit your cell phone in it. Mine fits in there pretty well. And then on the top is a zippered compartment that you can put your change, more cash receipts, or anything else that you need to carry around. So this project is going to be cork or vinyl friendly. This is not going to work with quilt cotton or anything that frays because this is not going to be turned. You will have raw edges along the sides and on some of your pieces. So let's go ahead, grab some cork and get started. You can download the one page um, sheet with the template right on the website. That's going to include this little template right here that rounds your corners. So when you take a look at the wallet, the bottom edges as well as the flap and the back pocket all have this rounded corner. You're going to need a nine by 27 of cork of your main. That's going to be the main part of your wallet with the zipper as well as your flap and your back pocket. And then you'll need an accent piece, either scraps or a nine by 12 to make your card pockets. You will also need a zipper that's at least eight inches long. This is a nylon zipper, so I can sew over the ends. That's gonna be really important in this wallet. You'll need something you can sew over both ends, so I would not suggest a metal zipper. Other than that, the only hardware you'll need is your closure, so either a magnetic snap like this or the style I have on the wallet here. That one does require a rivet setter, and if you don't have one, that's fine. You can just use a regular magnet, and I'll show you how to do both styles in this video. So let's go over some of the other supplies you'll need for today. I will of course need my ruler and my rotary cutter to do all of my trimming. I have a couple pairs of scissors here, nice and sharp to the point. These are gonna be great for trimming and cutting any of my little threads. I have uh, two pairs just to be safe. I have some marking tools. I use a regular pen when I'm doing anything that's going to be cut away. And I have my chalk pencil for marking my credit card pockets and things like that. I also have my 4-in-1 tool because I'm going to need a seam ripper for my magnetic snap. With any bag making, I always have lots of clips around. Those are very helpful. And I'm going to be using this uh, self-stick tape as well. This is quarter inch wide and I'll make sure to link that for you. It's not a fusible tape. Really helpful for this project. And I'm going to be sewing this on my Janome 15,000 domestic. So these are some of the feet that I use. I have my zipper foot. I have my blind hem foot and I also have my quarter inch foot. I'm gonna be switching back and forth between those two a lot for my quarter inch and my eighth inch stitching. This wallet has a lot of top stitching and the finishing parts are actually eighth inch. I did double top stitching on most of my pieces here. That's optional, it's whatever you like, but the entire wallet will require an eighth inch stitch. So make sure that you have a foot that can do that really well for you. There's some more double stitching that I did and then I used my zipper foot around the zipper. So this wallet works best with a non-directional print. And what I mean is that you are going to actually turn this piece. So I wanna make sure that I don't have anything that's going to be upside down on one half. The zipper is gonna be in the center. So when I fold this, I just wanna make sure that it's not going to bother me that it's going in two different directions. So I'm gonna turn this over and this is my 10 by eight inch piece. This is my main piece. And I'm gonna grab my pen and my ruler and I'm going to mark the zipper opening. So you can see here, the zipper sits right at the top and I just need to make an opening so that I can put the zipper in there and sew it in place. It's not a lined pocket because the cork does not um, fray and it doesn't require a lining. So from my eight inch edge, I'm going to measure four and three quarter inches. And I'm just gonna use my pen and make a mark here. I don't care if my line is longer than it needs to be and no one's gonna see it. I'll turn my piece around and mark four and three quarter inches from the other side. So now I will have a half inch wide rectangle. If you've done any of my other patterns, this might seem kind of familiar. I'm marking an inch from each side. And now I have a little box right in the middle. So now that I have that drawn, I'm going to have to cut that out. You can use scissors, a rotary cutter, um, an X-Acto knife, whatever you prefer. But here's what I like to do. I line up my ruler and I use my rotary cutter to cut the majority of this line. I don't want to get all the way into the corners because I don't want to overcut. So I'm not starting too far back and I'm just cutting most of that line. I find it easier than using scissors, but if you have a different technique that works for you, by all means do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut both of those long lines. 
And now that the majority of that is cut, now I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna get right into the corner and give that a snip right to that short edge and then I can cut my short edge. The great thing about using a print for this is if your lines are not perfect, it really hides it well. And if I'm not happy with how I've cut it, I can always go back in and adjust. You have some wiggle room, so don't be afraid to cut it and make it as perfect as you want it to be. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit there and cut this last little end. And there we go. And of course I get one little thread from the backing fabric. So I'll just snip that, make it nice and clean. Let's go ahead and check the front. Looks awesome, looks nice and straight, I'm happy. So that's going to sit on the top. So if it's not perfectly straight, it's really not the end of the world. So I'm gonna turn my piece over and now I'm gonna grab my tape. And again, this is not a fusible tape like I normally would use. This is a non-fusible, it's actually a wash away tape. I will make sure it's linked for you. I bought it on Amazon, it was quite inexpensive. And it's not permanent, but it's going to do the job to get me to my sewing machine and keep my zipper in place and keep it straight. If you don't have this tape, you can use some glue. You could even try some masking tape, whatever is gonna help you. Uh, pins and clips are gonna be kind of hard because of the way that this opening is. So I would find you know something that you can use. I've seen a lot of people do techniques like this with glue sticks, whatever works for you and you have handy. I love this tape though, I've been using it a lot and I will use it again for the card pockets. So what I like to do with this tape, because the paper's kind of thick, is I take my scissors and I just run the edge of them along there. It really secures it to the back of the cork and it makes sure that when I pull the paper up, I'm not removing the tape. I'll go ahead and remove the paper. And again, this is quarter inch wide. We don't want anything too wide. And I'm gonna grab my zipper. I've already added my pull. If one of your ends is still open, that's totally fine. Mine just happens to be closed. My pull went on nice and straight. But if your end is open, that's fine. And I'm just gonna place this on top and I'll kind of fuss with it until I get it nice and straight and even so I'm happy with it. The better it looks now, the better it's gonna look when I'm done sewing. So I'll just use my fingernail and just kind of get that where I want it. And once it's in place, I'll just firmly press down on those edges. I don't have any tape on the short edges and that's fine. Yes, my zipper is hanging out on the end and that's fine, I will trim it away later. So now I'm gonna take this to my machine and sew about a 16th to an eighth of an inch. So I've gone ahead and stitched around my zipper with my zipper foot. I'm about a 16th of an inch away. I'm gonna turn my piece over and trim off the excess zipper. I wanna keep as much of this out of the seam allowance as I can. That's what's going to keep this uh, domestic friendly project. So I'm just gonna trim these little ends right here as well. And I just stitched around my zipper once. You can go over it twice if you want to. So now that that is all done, I'm going to grab my template and I'm going to start to do my trimming. I need to trim the corners on this piece and I also need to trim my pocket and my flap. Both of these pieces are the same size, so they are interchangeable. They are eight inches by seven and a half inches and I'm gonna trim the corners on all three of these pieces using my template. So let me just move these out of the way and I'll show you the best way to do this. Remember this piece is eight inches high by seven and a half inches wide. Not important right now for the trimming, but it will be when we get to the sewing part. So make sure that you don't mix that up and I'll go over it again when we're there. So I'm gonna take my template and I'm gonna trim these corners and I'm going to just mark on two of them. I'll show you a little trick I like to do. You can mark on the front or the back. I'm gonna mark on the back. I think it might be easier for you to see. So I'm just gonna align this right here and I'm just marking this curve, that's it. So I'm just gonna do that right here with my pen and now I'm gonna flip this piece over and I'm gonna do the opposite corner. And once I get that in place, I will just trace right around there. Again, I'm just using a pen because I'm gonna cut it away anyhow. So I need to do those other corners, but let me show you how I like to do it and keep it all nice and even. I'm going to just trim this corner right here using my scissors and keep in mind, this is not crucial. If your corners are not 100% perfect, it's okay. There will be other times during this that we can um, trim. So I'm gonna fold this in half, and now instead of tracing again, I'm just gonna use the corner I already cut and just use my scissors and trim my other corners. I just find it easier this way, less mistakes and less steps. I don't have to trace anything. So once I get this done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three pieces as well. So I went ahead and finished up my trimming. I have my main piece with the zipper. I did all four corners on that one. 
I also have my two pieces for my pocket on the back and my flap. These are the same size and I trimmed all four corners on these. So again, just remember this is eight high by seven and a half wide. That's going to come into account and be very important real soon. And since I had my template out and I do like to do all of my tracing at once, I trimmed one of my card pockets. You have four total. I just trimmed one, so I trimmed two corners on this card pocket. We're not gonna get to that just yet though. So let me move these other pieces out of the way and I'm gonna start working on my pocket. So this is going to be on the back. This is just an open slip pocket and it's going to get stitched around on the back. So all I need to do is really top stitch the top edge. So again, I'm checking my size and I want my eight, there we go, to be the height. I want this to be seven and a half. It needs to be narrow um, more than it is tall. So I'm gonna fold this in half and just use some clips and just align those raw edges and just go right around all of my sides here. And now that I have that ready, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and just top stitch this top edge. You can do an eighth, a quarter, or both, whatever you like. So I went ahead and finished up my pocket. The bottom edges are still open. I've gone ahead and top stitched this top edge only, just the straight side, and I chose to do an eighth and a quarter. I like how that looks. So now that's done, I'm gonna set this piece aside and go ahead and grab my other piece for the flap. So again, this is eight inches high by seven and a half inches wide, and I'm gonna treat it the same as I did the pocket. I'm gonna fold it in half, once again, making sure that it is seven and a half inches wide. That's gonna be really important. I'm gonna fold it in half wrong sides together and just add some clips all the way around. Before I take my flap to the sewing machine, I need to determine what type of closure I'm going to be using. On this sample right here, I've used a ring snap that is set with a rivet setter. So in this style, I already have done my top stitching and then I've used my rivet setter and my punch and I've added this snap afterwards. But if I want to add a magnetic snap like the one that I have today, how am I going to do that? as well as hide that washer and the prongs. Those are not pretty and we don't wanna see those when the piece is finished. So I've gone ahead and I folded this in half just to show you. And when I open this up, that's where I wanna hide the washer. If I do that, how am I going to get my top stitching really close? Again, as you can see on this sample here, my top stitching is close to the edge and my snap is really close. This top edge right here is going to be attached to the wallet and I've just top stitched around the bottom and the sides right here. But if I want to add a magnetic closure, I need to do my magnetic closure first since I need to hide the washer. And if I do that, I won't have enough clearance to get my sewing machine foot around so I can get clean top stitching and also have the magnet low to the bottom of the flap. I don't like my magnet to be too high. So how do I do my top stitching and also add in a magnet so that they're not in each other's way when I have a piece that's folded in half? So the best way that I have found is to do this little hack, and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. If I add the magnetic snap first, it's gonna be up here, all the way up towards the top. It's gonna to be probably an inch or so to give me clearance for my foot, and I don't really like that. So instead, what I like to do is take these clips off, and I'm gonna turn this from one folded piece into two pieces, just by trimming off that folded edge. I find it much easier to work with two pieces with this style closure. Let me move these clips out of the way. I'll just move them all. <laughs> They're all, all in my way. So I have my piece folded wrong sides together and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off a tiny bit, like an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch. And just a little bit. So now I've made my flap into two pieces, which is fine because again, the cork isn't gonna fray. So now I can put my clips back on take this to the machine, do my top stitching so I get it perfect, and then I have an opening at the top to add my magnet. Now I can hide the washer and the prongs and still have a really nice finished flap. So I did my top stitching on my flap and I have my magnetic snap here and I just wanted to show you, so hopefully this little hack makes a little bit more sense. You can see I have my double top stitching and if I were to add the magnetic snap first and then do top stitching, I would need to add it much higher up. This way, because I've done the hack where I have an opening on the top, I can top stitch and then add the snap close and I still have a place to put my washer. So my flap is all set. My top stitching is just on the bottom and the sides. It's all ready to go and now I can add my magnetic closure. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the center 
and I'm just using the lines on my mat. It's seven and a half inches wide, so it should be three and three quarter inches from each side. And I'm going to just put a pin right there down at the bottom. Don't worry, the pin is not hurting anything. It's just uh, sitting there to help me mark my center. So now I'm gonna take one of the washers and I'm going to set my washer so the bottom edge is just at my quarter inch top stitching. And let me see if I can get that in place and I'll bring it up a little bit closer for you just so you can see what I mean. So the bottom edge of the washer is touching my quarter inch top stitching. So if you did only an eighth inch, you wanna be about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Now I'm gonna mark in the two little slits with my pen. I can take out my pin and move the washer. And now I wanna make sure I'm only cutting through this half. Remember, I don't wanna cut through both sides. So I'm going to use my seam ripper and I'll show you a little trick I like to do just to get through the one side. You can use scissors for this, but what I do is I put my seam ripper in the bottom of that little slit, poke that through, and then I poke it through to the top. And then I do my little trim. It's a little bit more difficult to do, but it prevents me from sliding too far and making a big hole in my flap and then having to start all over. So I'll do both of those. And now I'm gonna take the male half of the washer, or excuse me, the snap, the side that has the little um, piece in the middle, I just like to put that part on my flap. I don't know that there's a wrong or a right way, but it's how I always do it. And I'm reaching inside since I did the hack where I have an open top and I'm adding my washer and I like to fold my prongs inward. So I take my scissors and I use the edge of those. I find it much easier than trying to do it with my hands. And I'm just gonna fold each of the prongs on top of each other around the washer. Because it's cork, I'm not adding anything extra. Give it one good push and I am done. So now I have that in place. So my flap is essentially done and you'll see on this finished piece, just like on this one, it's right down towards the bottom. The flap will get sewn on underneath the zipper in a little bit. I do have some little threads to trim, so I will go ahead and do that. And right here on my corner, I must have shifted a little bit at the sewing machine or maybe I didn't cut them perfectly. I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a quick trim. It's not going to be a big deal if you trim a little bit here and there. But before I finish this up, I do like to check for threads. I like to backstitch everything, and so I like to trim my threads as I go, just kind of get rid of those and keep that nice and clean. I got one that's caught here. Let me get that out. Get my little scissors in there to do the job. All these threads drive me crazy, and I'd rather not wait until the end. I'd rather just do them all right now. So now the flap is essentially done. I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm going to start working on the card pockets. So here is my main piece and I'm gonna turn it around. I like to put my card pockets on the front and I like my zipper to open from left to right. Does it make a huge difference? Probably not, but for me, I always call that the front. So my zipper um, pull is on the left. My pocket will go back here. My flap will be on the front here. So my credit card pockets need to be under the zipper with the zipper pull on the left. So let me grab my card pockets here. You have four total. They're two inches high by eight inches wide. This is the one that we trimmed earlier that has the corners. That's gonna be the last one we add on, so we don't have to do anything with that right now. But on these three, I want to eliminate some bulk from these corners to make sure that my domestic can get through it and I don't have too many layers to sew through when I'm finished. So what I'm gonna do is trim out the corners of these three. And I'll just show you on one here. Grab my ruler and I'm going to measure in on the bottom two corners. Go in a half inch and up an inch. So a half inch deep, one inch high. And I'm gonna do it on the two bottom corners. Just like this, mark, and then I'm gonna cut. And I'll just use my scissors. Again, if these are not perfect, it's totally fine. That little curved edge pocket is going to cover up all the rest of this. This is just to help us reduce bulk. So I'm turning all three of these kind of in like a T shape. I'm gonna repeat this on the other two so I get these all ready and then I'll be ready to add them on. So I've gone ahead and finished trimming all three of my pockets. I have four in total. I just trimmed the corners on three. Again, you trim the two bottom corners a half inch in and one inch up. I also took all of my card pockets to the machine and did my top stitching. I did an eighth and a quarter. So all three of those are ready, as well as my bottom curved pocket. I top stitched that as well. So those curves are gonna line up on the bottom when the time comes. So the first thing that I'm going to do to add my card pockets is I'm gonna start with one of the T-shaped pockets. I have my ruler and I have some clips. 
Again, my zipper is on the left hand side and I already went ahead and added some tape along the bottom edge. I find this really helpful. So I'm gonna peel my paper off and that's gonna help me to stick this down onto my uh, piece. So I'm gonna use my ruler, my zipper's on the left and I'm going to measure an inch and a half from this bottom edge and I'm going to place my card pocket right up against my ruler. I'm aligning the sides and I'm aligning the bottom. And once I get that in place, I can go ahead and just push firmly on my tape. I have my clips here, so I'll add a couple of those as well. If you're skipping the tape, you'll just use your clips. And once I have that in place, I'm going to stitch just along the bottom edge. So right along here, a quarter of an inch, just on that bottom edge, nowhere, nowhere else. And once I'm done with that, I'll show you how to add the rest of your card pockets. I've stitched my first pocket in place a quarter of an inch right along that bottom edge. It's nice and stuck down because I've also used the tape. I'm not gonna stitch the top, obviously, and I didn't do anything with the sides just yet. So now that I have this one in place, I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to place my second card pocket from the top edge. So the first one I measured from the bottom, this I'm now gonna measure from the top. So using my ruler, I'm going to place card pocket two a half inch down from the first one. So I'm gonna peel my paper off here. Again, you can just use clips, I'm using the tape as well. And I'm aligning this right along the edge of the ruler and the side of the wallet, just like I did before. Now I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch along this bottom edge, and I'll do the same with my third pocket. I'll come back and show you how to address your final pocket. All three of my T-shaped card pockets are now stitched in place. I sewed them individually and I stitched a quarter of an inch from the bottom edge of each. My first one up here was placed an inch and a half from the bottom edge. And then each one after that was placed a half inch from the one before it. So from here to here, top edge to top edge is a half inch. And from here to here is also a half inch. That's also an inch right there from the one to three. So I like to use my ruler to make sure that everything stays straight. I like to measure from the top as well as the bottom as I'm going along. It just helps to make sure that nothing has shifted because we don't want our card pockets to skew and be crooked. So now that those are sewn in, I wanna show you why we did these corners like this. If you take a look right here, you can see that there's no more than two layers of card pockets at a time. That is eliminating a lot of the bulk, which is going to make our finishing steps much easier. By doing that, I've just made it much more domestic friendly and I've made sure to not make myself crazy at the end. So I'm going to grab my final pocket. This is the one that I've already trimmed the corners from. And I don't even have to measure this one if I've done everything else correctly. I can place this right along the bottom and this should be a half inch down from the third pocket, which it is. So now that I have that in place, I'm going to sew right along the bottom edge, right along here. I'm gonna stitch the side, the bottom, as well as the side an eighth of an inch. When I'm done, I'm going to mark and stitch my center to create eight card pockets. I'm gonna start down here. I stitch all the way up to this top one, pivot back down and stop. All four of my card pockets are sewn in place. I went ahead and stitched an eighth of an inch around the bottom and sides. I'm just gonna go ahead and do any little trimming that I need to do. With pieces like this, it tends to happen, so you will do a little bit of trimming as you go, and when you're finished uh, for the final steps, you'll do some more trimming. So I'm just gonna trim up that edge right there. I also divided the center, so I measured four inches in, since this is eight inches wide. I started at the bottom, stitched all the way up to the top, pivoted my piece, so I just turned it completely in the machine, and stitch back down. And I backstitch when I started and stopped just like I did on everything else. So now I have eight card pockets and that part is finished. So now it's time to add the flap. So I have my flap piece here and your flap is seven and a half inches wide so it's narrower. My magnetic snap is facing downward and I'm going to use my ruler. I'm going to measure a half inch from the bottom just like so and I'm gonna measure a quarter of an inch from each side. So I'll just put my ruler here, scoot this over if I need to, and double check my measurement, and it's perfect. So I'm gonna grab a few clips and just add those to the sides. I don't need tape or anything else for this step, just some clips will do. And once I have that in place, I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to st stitch the top edge. So just along here, you can do an eighth or a quarter, does not matter, I'll probably do both. 
My flap is all stitched in place. I did an eighth and a quarter. I'm gonna turn this over and just get rid of some of these threads. I've been trying to cut them as I go, but I've missed some on the back here. So I'm gonna trim those up as well. So now that my flap is in place, I need to add the other half of my magnetic snap. So I've stitched along the top here. I've left the sides and the bottom open because I need to lift this so I can see my credit card pockets. So I have my half already in here and I need to put the other half through the credit card pockets. So what I'm gonna do is grab the other half of my magnetic snap and the washer. And what I like to do is instead of using the washer to mark and have it be off a little bit, is I take my snap and I actually just snap it together and then what I'm gonna do is just kind of line this up and press down. And what I'm doing is using the prongs to make two little marks. They're not gonna show up for you on camera, but I can definitely see them. It's just a little trick that I like to do. So I take that off and I can see the little marks. So I'll go ahead and mark them with a pen so you can see them as well. And then I need to cut through all these layers all the way to the back. And again, it might seem a little bit strange because I'm cutting through card pockets, but you will have plenty of space. You just don't want to use a very large magnet. Mine is about a half inch. So I'm starting the openings with my seam ripper and I'm going to take my scissors because I have a few layers to cut through and I'm going to finish them up. So I just use these really sharp pointed scissors, get them right inside, make sure I'm cutting all the way through to the back. And now I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the front. I'm going to take the other half of my magnet Put that right through those slits, turn that over, add the washer. I don't even really need the washer in this case with all the layers, but I'll use it anyway. And again, I use my scissors to push those prongs over on top of each other. And that's it, I'm done. So now my snap works. I will show you in a little bit how to do it with a rivet setter as well, so don't worry if that's the style you would like to use. So now that my flap and my card pockets are done, the last piece I need to add is my open pocket on the back. And I'm going to add it the same way I did my flap. It's going to be a half inch up from the bottom. So I use my ruler again. And then I kind of eyeball it and then double check, get a quarter of an inch. And oops, of course I shifted it. Let me do that again. A half inch up from the bottom, hold that firmly in place and then check that I am a quarter of an inch from the left and the right. All right. And then I'll take some clips once I have that in place and clip that down. I'm also kind of double checking to make sure that it looks straight along the bottom as well as along the zipper. I don't want this to be crooked when it's finished. So I'll add some clips. And this time, instead of sewing across the top, since it's a pocket, I'm gonna sew along the bottom and the side edge, kind of like I did with the credit card pockets. So I'm going to show you another way that you can add a closure to your wallet using your rivet setter. I have here a four piece ring snap set and I also have the die set to go with it. This is 12.5 millimeter. On the wallet we've been working on, this is the magnetic snap here. We only see the front side of the magnetic snap. We want the prongs and the washer to be hidden within the flap and the pocket so that we don't see those. But when it comes to this, you're actually going to see the snap on the front and back of the flap just like here on this finish piece. You can see this is my cap right here and my snap on the other side. This is a single cap. Over here on the other side of the snap, we are gonna hide the back side just like we did for the magnetic snap. Now on this kind of magnetic snap, it really doesn't matter which part goes on the flap and which goes on the bottom. I just kind of do it in the order that I showed you. But when it comes to this style, the side with the cap is always gonna go on your flap. That's what's going to be showing towards the outside of your wallet. So it's actually very simple to do. We'll just need uh, something to cut, something to mark, and um, our rivet setter. So this piece right here, we're gonna work on second. We're gonna work on the flap first. So let me move this out of the way. I've already gone ahead and I've marked my center here. I'm just following the line of my card pockets. And I'm going to be using my uh, rivet setter to set these two pieces. I'll move the back pieces away. I don't need those right now. 
So I'm going to take the snap part itself instead of the cap, even though the cap goes on the front, and I'm going to use this to mark my little um, hole here. So I've already marked the center, but I just wanna make sure I know exactly where I want my hole. So I'm going to use the snap part and just use my pen and just draw right inside of that little circle. I know it's hard for you to see. Let me see if a chalk pencil makes a difference. Uh, nope, probably not, but that's okay, I can see it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to cut a hole. So I can use my rivet setter, but I'm gonna use my Pro Master Punch. I've used this in a few videos and talked about it. I really like it. I just don't have my punch set on my rivet setter right now. So I'm gonna turn this around and cut a hole. This is gonna go through both layers of cork. And I'm using the 2.5 size hole. It just seems to work well with this snap. So what I'm gonna do is this cap is gonna go through the front. Again, that's gonna show on the outside. And I'm gonna take the flat part of the snap. You'll see there's kind of a hollowed out part and a flat part. We want the hollowed out part facing out. That's how it attaches to the other half of the snap. And I'm gonna put those on there. So the next thing I need to do is get my rivet setter prepared. So I have my snap setter right here. And this is a four piece die. Most of your other dies are gonna be two pieces, but this one is four. And because sometimes it gets confusing, what I've done is I've taken two of my pieces and I marked them with a Sharpie. You can see here a little bit of pink, just so that I remember that that is a pair and then the other two are a pair. I'm gonna set those aside. I don't need that set right now. This one right here that has this little dome shape right there, that's gonna be for the cap. And you want the correct size so your cap can sit right and snug in there. And the other half, which is going to press into the post part, this one down here, and uh, put those two pieces together. That has kind of a little groove and then a secondary groove in the middle. So I'm gonna pop the bottom part in and turn this over so you can see. I'm gonna take my screw in top part and put that in, and I try not to over tighten, so I just twist it until it stops and no more. So now I have my pieces ready. I don't bother with the screw on the bottom. I find that I don't need to tighten that at all. So let me put my pieces back into my flap. So the cap is on the outside. The flat part goes against the flap. And I'm gonna take this right over to the press. The cap goes on the bottom, on the larger part of the die set. And once I get that lined up, I'm just gonna give it a real good press. And there we go, it gets stuck, it always does. I'm gonna take that off and just like that, I have half done. So now I need to put the other half where the card pockets are. So this is very similar to what we did with the magnetic snap, except I don't wanna snap these two pieces together. It's really hard to get them apart if I do that. So I'm just resting it right where it needs to be, making sure that it's, it's like ready to snap. And then I'll just use my fingernail to hold that in place and I'll grab a marking tool. I'm gonna try the chalk pencil again for you and just mark in the center. So again, the flatter part is gonna go down and I'm gonna use my punch again. And even with all these layers, it goes through really nicely. And I'll make my next hole. So the two pieces for this, there is a post and then there is the snap. And I'm gonna change out on my rivet press, but before I do that, I'll show you how these pieces go together. First, I'm gonna just clip my flap out of the way just to keep it from, um, from getting in your way. I'm gonna take this post and this goes from the back. So this is hidden later. Because it's a single cap, you're not gonna see this part. So there's a little texture to it and then the post goes right up through the hole. I know it's difficult to see because it's dark. I'm using a gunmetal finish. And then I'm gonna take my snap and I put that flatter part down. And before you do anything, you can again check it. The die is not going to go in it if it's incorrect and you don't wanna ruin your hardware. So I just double check, make sure that I have it correct. And I always have one around that's already finished so I can just triple check. So I'm gonna set that on there move that over so I can change out my dies. So again, I just pop the bottom out. I don't tighten that bottom screw really ever. I'm gonna unscrew the top part and I'm gonna switch these. So the bottom part has like a little nub that's going to sit underneath the post where the hole is, so I don't damage that. And the top part has this rubber ring and then it also has that little nub similar to the other piece we just used. Once I have that in, just tighten it until it stops. Now I'm ready to go. Now this is a little bit thicker, so I just like to take my time, make sure I can get that in there. And remember there's a spring, whoops, there's a spring on the bottom if you have to push it down a little bit to get your wallet in. And I'll just gently lower the top and then smush it. 
It's a great way to get out all of your aggressions. And now once that's done, I am finished. I can take my clip off here and now, as long as I did it right, it snaps. So I'm ready to move on and finish my wallet. So all of my pockets and flaps are sewn into place. I'm ready to go. My back pocket is right here. I've got my flap with all of my card pockets underneath. So everything is complete and now it's time to close up the sides. So what I'm gonna do is just fold this in half, wrong sides together and grab my clips and I'm just gonna start clipping all the way around. And you can see here, I've just got a few layers that I have to sew through, no more than about three. I find that four is um, kind of the max on my domestic before I have to start really making adjustments. So I'm just gonna add some clips here and get this all lined up. If there's any threads I need to trim, I will do that as well. And if I'm off at all, and in some spots it looks like I've kind of you know shifted a little bit, I can do some trimming when I'm all done. I like to get it sewn first and then do my trimming. So once I get this clipped all the way around, I will be ready to take it to my sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around the sides and the bottom. Trim some threads first, always. <laughs> and then once I am ready to go, I will try different feet and see um, which one works the best for me. So I might use my zipper foot or I might use my blind hem. I'm just going to go ahead and do um, an eighth of an inch all the way around come back, take a look, do any trimming I need to, and I'll be good to go. I'm all done. I stitched all the way around my edges with an eighth of an inch stitch. I did sew it twice just to make sure it was nice and secure. I didn't have any issues with the layers. Um, the only time I had an issue was right up at the top corner here where the flap and the pocket are really close to each other. You can see they're on opposite sides. My foot just didn't want to move. It was kind of getting hung up. I could have changed feet, probably would have made it easier, but I didn't. But other than that, it's done. The only thing that I might do is add some edge coat or some finishing to the edges, especially if I'm gonna give this as a gift. This is a great wallet to practice your edge coat skills on. I've got all my card pockets here, ready to fill those up. Zippered pocket in the top here, and on the back, I've got my nice open pocket. It's flat, but it definitely holds a lot. So I'm super excited to see how your Daybreak wallets come out. Please tag me when you post them.